Welcome to Discover Indie Film. I'm your host, Jeff Howard, and this is going to be a fun episode. I've got four people with me, and you know what? When we did the interview podcast, I had you all introduce yourselves, but I'm going to try to do it. And I haven't even gone back over how to pronounce names, but I think I can do it. Although Jules' last name is tricky, but I'm going to I'm going to go ladies first. <laughs> Are you starting with the difficult one? Mm-hmm. Get it out of the way. Yeah. Jules Quas. Yeah. Impressive. Bailey Castle. Hello. David Camelli and Jeremy Shea the are paid off. they <laughs> are here. <laughs> And this is the Discovery Indie Film Podcast. They did one all about themselves and their film back home. And this podcast is what we do when people come hang out because obviously I just love to talk to f- with people about film. So this one is answering the four questions. All four people answer the four questions. I think that's 16 answers, by the <laughs> way, because I can do math. <laughs> but the questions are name three favorite films, name a film you consider underrated, Name a film you consider overrated and name a lesser known film that people should seek out. And it's really just to have fun and note the questions like it's not the best films of all time. It's three favorites, just three films you love. I used sometimes I thought about like adding the question guilty pleasure, but no one wants to admit their guilty pleasure. Mm -hmm. So and by the way, there will be links to people's social media and someday how to see the film back home, which everyone should see. It won an award at Film Vision Los Angeles in 2023, last year. So, should I call out who should go first or who wants to go first? Mm-hmm. And name, uh, we'll do, everyone will do favorites, but you guys know the, the snake pattern we're going to do. Mm-hmm. I think you should call us out because you're so good at our names. Let's start with Bailey. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I I no. <laughs> Okay, no, well, three favorite films. I was like, kill me now. I don't, I, I, my initial response in my head was like, from which country? Like, I truly was these like, you have been literally agonizing over these questions, so. agonizing because I'm like, three favorite films. I, I'm like, I have three favorite films, and then I'm like, I have three other favorite films. <laughs> um, I have a literal yellow notepad in front of me. Um, I have so many things circled that I was going to commit to, but um, La Cienega is one of my favorite films. Um, Dog Day Afternoon is one of my favorite films. Tempopo is one of my favorite films. I have to stop there. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, sometimes I joke, like, I don't have a black and white striped shirt and a whistle. Like, (laughs) like, if you name an extra one or two. Okay, I'm like, Babette's Feast, Good Morning, The Flavor of Green Tea Over Rice, Nashville, any John Cassavetes film, like, I can in the mood for love, Days of Heaven, which is like required viewing. I feel like you're gonna need a whistle. I know the Ugh. the piano teacher. Can we talk about the piano teacher? Where I wanted to watch one night, I was like, I want to watch like an erotic romance film, and the poster for the piano teacher is so misleading that I was like, what am I watching? This is the <laughs> scariest thing I've ever seen. It's burned deep into my brain memories, but it's one of the scariest best films I've ever watched and Isabel Huppert is just like sometimes I, I watch her act and I'm like well I don't need to act because she did it <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I love that film it's so good I, I'm gonna brag it because I'm older mm-hmm. old enough probably to be everyone's parent but but I saw that in the theaters like when it first came out oh my and god it was incredible just incredible how did the audience react to watching that like not how, well not well I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure. When she picks up that Kleenex <laughs> and inc- sniffs, holds it to her nose, that first reveal of how <laughs> perverse she might be. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. It's so But cool. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was sh- I was shouting, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like even a shot, like the bathroom scene where she like gets into the bathtub um, and you don't really know what's going on until you know what's happening, but because I don't want to spoil anything, but I miss shots like that where it's this like massive, I, I didn't go to film school, so apologies in advance, but this like wide shot where you get to see everything and it feels like these older films are like theater filmed. So you, you get to watch actors be idiosyncratic and be in relationship to their environment and each other that I just, I'm obsessed with watching on film. Well, that's a great one. All right, now it's Jules's turn. Okay. Um, so I am not the film buff of this group. So mine are going to be a little more, uh, uh, what's the word? Like, oh, really, that one? 
Um, the very first film that got me into music and musicals, and it's the first film I remember watching, is Grease. Absolutely obsessed. Um, I think I think that John Travolta as Danny Zuko was my sexual awakening. To be perfectly honest, <laughs> um, right? I um, like in many ways. <laughs> right, right. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, Shawshank Redemption was a movie that. I didn't want to end and it was the first time I had experienced that feeling of like, no, I could truly watch this for like the rest of my life. Like just keep going, just keep going. Um, this is a film that I feel like people don't talk about enough. And I think it's fucking comedic genius is some like it hot. Like you oh, yeah. truly, mm. you do not know mm. what is going to happen in every single scene. Like I could not, the, as the entire time I was watching that film, I was like, I couldn't really, really couldn't predict what was going to happen next. And I thought that that was just sheer brilliance. And also I feel that Marilyn Monroe is grossly underrated as an actor totally. and as a comedian as well. I, I, you know, she's got this whole blonde, blonde bombshell ditzy bimbo thing um, as a, her stereotype, and her death was a mystery and blah blah blah. I find her so fascinating as a character, as a person, as an actor, and I think that that she was grossly underrated in this film. And I, and yet she, the fact that she was able to hold force with. Uh, Tony Curtis and uh, Jimmy, Jack Jimmy, 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 Jack Lemon, Jack, Jack, Jack Lemon. Thank you. I, I was thinking of Jamie Lee Curtis, and then I was like, no, it's Tony Curtis, and mm -hmm. thank you, Jack Lemon. Um, the fact that she was able to hold sway with them, I think, really speaks volumes. Um, uh, my fourth one, my bonus one, uh, is a movie called Her with Joaquin Phoenix. Mm -hmm. It came out maybe like twelve years ago, give or mm -hmm. take, and that was a movie that literally had me crying in my bed in college. It's fine. Um, I'm like 12 years That's ago. 12 years. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. like two or three no, also. No, no I, I, I can tell you. I hope it's like I, eight. I came back, actually, um, ah, no, it actually might be 10 years ago because I came back from abroad. Um, I studied abroad, in, studied abroad in fall of 2013 and I watched the movie in my bed, like junior, junior year, like in 2014. So that's how I know. Jules, um, have you ever seen All About Eve? No. Okay. it's. I think it's Marilyn Monroe. It's like one of her first film yeah, debuts right. and she has a very small part in it and she's so funny in it you gotta I watch know. it i know it's it, i could okay you, you want to do another podcast do it about <laughs> like you know like women in film who were grossly underrated and overly sexualized and like their talent is just not at all recognized in the way that it should be marilyn monroe would be the first one that you should do because mm -hmm. i would be on there and i would just be on my <laughs> fucking soapbox for days on end uh -huh. I completely agree, and I completely agree about Some Like It Hot. I think it's brilliant. Obviously, Billy Wilder was yeah. genius. But everyone on that, I've seen interviews. Like Everyone had the utmost respect for Marilyn involved in that film, but society didn't, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm and gonna, it sucks. I'm going I'm to combat you on that because I have seen interviews, and maybe they were plagiarized or written or whatever, but like where Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis – intentionally try to give her like shit essentially and try to make her job difficult while simultaneously she was dealing with her own mental health issues while of course you know dealing with the horrors of Hollywood in the 1960s being a woman at that time and so consequently she wasn't always the best to work with she would be late on set she wouldn't come out her trailer blah blah blue and they rumor you know at least from what I read were like oh she was so difficult to work with how dare she blah, 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 blah. so I'm curious that you're seeing interviews that they were glowing at her. Maybe this is a post-mortem kind of thing where they're like, oh, well, she dies. Now we have to talk about her in a nice way. I have a feeling it is actually in recent memory mm. that now Tony, an older right, Tony right, Curtis, right. and in order they're talking about how gifted she was and right. how talented she was. At the time, they might have seen her as a piece of ass. Yeah, a piece of ass who was difficult to work with, quote unquote, when, again, yeah, I could, I could go on. Oh, because she had to take drugs to deal with all the sexual abuse and rape? She's uh, yeah, with? no, it's fine. It's and fine. she's working with Strasburg, oh, who's... Do sometimes annoy people with this, but it's not a casting couch. It's a rape sofa. Yes. Mm -hmm. Woo. Yes. Speak it. Oh my God. I mean, you want to talk about her. You want to talk about Judy Garland. I mean, these mm. women, they fucking mm. suffered. But yeah, they do. Anyways, I'm sorry. This is again, podcast yeah. for another day, right? Jeff, it's fine. <laughs> for sure. But great list, great Thanks. list. Mm -hmm. And now it's Dave's turn. So I was thinking, like everybody here, I have a lot of films. Uh, so for me, it's just the ones that I've, I guess recently been watching over and over again. So for me, that would be uh, Steve Jobs with Michael Fassbender. Um, uh, the Big Short uh, as a finance guy. I love that movie. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that movie. And then the last one, and this is probably the most impactful movie of 
uh, of my life next to Goodwill Hunting is The Dark Knight because to me Heath Ledger just blew me away. I saw that and I had never, mm. I had never seen anything like that in my life, and that was when I was like, got me even further into like studying actors, studying the greats. Uh, that was that was that was transformational for me. So that was that was um, an impactful one. And if I had to do a bonus one, yeah. um, it's not a movie, but uh, True Detective, the first season. I, I love it. I watch it over and over again. I, I pick things that I watch over and over again. I figured that th- those must be my favorites. I see them a million. Well, times, I think so. the Big Short for you, it's just I feel like it's a movie that's literally made for you specifically because it has great acting. It literally talks about talks about the financial crisis. You have a financial background. You uh, finance is still a big part of your day to day. Like, and you know all the terminology, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the funny thing is I, I, oh, I it's cool. such a complicated thing and finance is really its own language and I know what they're talking about. Like they have, you know, if you don't know the language, like, yeah, and I, I speak the language, I'm fluent that's in funny. it, so Literally. It's, it's cool to, it's cool to see it. I'm going to go pick up some subprime tranches, <laughs> <laughs> something else, I don't know. I just want to highlight the Steve Jobs note because mm-hmm. no one's ever named it before. I, I do think movie. it's great. I, I think it. he's amazing. Oh. I could probably watch him read out of the phone book, oh, yeah. Yeah, but Incredible. there are no phone books anymore. Incredible. But, oh, but yeah, that's that. And that that is a film that just shows you the, like just focusing on one incredibly t- talented performer can work. It's mm. uh, I the, the scene mm. um, uh, with uh, Jeff Daniels, who I think uh, plays uh, Sully in that. Um, the scene, the second act, where the two of them are, uh, he's waiting to go on to present the, the next computer, and they're in that, that scene with all the chairs. I, I watch that, like, on repeat, that scene. To me, that is everything that acting is. That is everything I hope to be when I'm on the screen. I mean, it's, it's quick. It's, it's emotional. It's, they're not even, they don't even have time. It's like, I mean, and it's the way that it was written. I mean, it's just, I... I lo- I could go on. I, I I just said that movie and sort of glossed over it, but I love that movie. I love it, and it's. I told Bailey, I was like, "That's everything I want to be as an artist." Is what I feel like that movie captured. So. And now I'm going to be uh, pathetic and just say something totally inaccurate, which is Fassbender owes everything in the world. Shame mm. is the piano teacher. Mm. Right, it, it, like he owes mm. everything. That that film, Shame, which I think is brilliant, mm-hmm. owes everything in the world to the piano teacher. Mm-hmm. Am I wrong? I don't think you're wrong. I think, I think it's... I don't think you're wrong. James right. a great film. It's, it's a great fucking film. Oh, it's my so God. Good. I weep unbelievably when she sings that song. Mm-hmm. And the camera never leaves her. Mm-hmm. Breaks every rule of cinema. Just <sighs> one shot. Locked on. It's, it's your turn. Okay. Um, gosh. I told myself, all right, I don't know how to do this. So I'm just going to do one comedy, one drama, and one foreign film. That's a good way but to do it. But then when I was hard. talking about my sisters in the previous podcast that we recorded, it reminded me of a film that we watched again and again and again as kids. My pops is a creature of habit, and in our childhood, we took that on to the nth degree. And almost every Saturday night when we were in elementary school, middle school, not middle school, elementary school, it must have been about six, seven, we'd have the same babysitter. And we'd watch one movie, and then the next week we'd come back again to this movie. And then we'd <laughs> veer off to another movie, and then the next week we'd come right back to this one. I felt so bad for that babysitter looking back. And that movie is called Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a John yes. Hughes film with Bonnie Hunt and Charles Grodin, R.I.P. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. It's a, dog, it's a children's right? movie. Dog, I honestly right? don't remember much about it. Right. But there's something so strongly attached to that film and my childhood and my sisters that I feel like I have to say it. <laughs> Thank you for saying the one that we all wanted to say. <laughs> there's in no way an amazing film, I don't think, or like one of the greatest films, but there is something about that film that we just kept coming back to, so Aww. I feel like I have to say that. Okay. I would be that was your foreign film. <laughs> <laughs> right to right. Oh, That's yeah, your one St. Bernard-based film. <laughs> By the way, I, I might share with you that uh, I worked at Big Five in high school, which is a sporting goods store, and I sold Charles Grodin shoes. Really? Yeah, cool. he wow. came in to buy shoes. Wow. And I was shocked at how bald he was because I guess he always wears toupees in films. Oh, but yeah. anyway, I got to sell him shoes and Tom Hanks, but go on. Ooh. During Bosom Buddies, by oh, the way. He wasn't, he wasn't a big shot. He wasn't a big Hanks? shot. No? Oh, yeah. okay. Ooh, Bosom Buddies, that was fun too. Ooh, I feel like I would be remiss to leave out Chaplin. Any oh. chaplain, my mom 
turn me on to Chaplin at a young age and I feel like I have a lot of comedic sense attributed to her and just watching him work and then realizing he did everything is just mind blowing. So any Chaplin really. Um, oh, I showed these. But guys. if but if if somebody who doesn't know Chaplin, where should they start? Because most of most of us have no clue. Oh man, I don't have a clue City to be Lights. honest. Yeah, maybe City except Lights, the dictator. Maybe yeah. the Gold Rush, Modern Times, The Great Dictator. One of those four are just some greats, just absolute masterpieces for how early it was in cinema and what he did. It was just just incredible to watch him work. Um, I showed, I don't know, had you guys seen this one before, but we all sat down a few months ago. I had everyone over for a movie night and we watched Little Miss Sunshine. Oh, yeah, yeah. I knew you were going to I say this. That. I knew you were going it's to say this. It's one of my absolute favorites. Yeah, it's another great. family drama, comedy drama, the little tragic comedy, and I just can't get enough of things that are a little slice of life that make you laugh and make you cry and... I think the acting is so wonderful in it. I love that film. And then for my international film, I'm going to pick a recent one because I loved Parasite. I thought that mm. film was stupendous, and I love what he did. I love his other work, too, but that one, when it got big, it just I was really happy for him, and I thought that it was an amazing film. I watched it three times in a week. I mm. That's what he did. Yeah. Fantastic. By the way, I'm going to point out a slight theme, which is between Groden and Alan Arkin. Like You dig the uh, the seasoned comic actor like like those those are just titans absolutely but not everyone not everyone appreciates those two absolutely and I, maybe that's why i'm really leaning into writing these these two series or, or features i haven't decided about old folks I, I don't know what is going on but it just keeps getting pulled back to these awesome. wasn't it such a cheat to write that grandpa character in little miss sunshine and have alan arkin yeah. talk about the oh. heroin and stuff yeah. like like it was yeah. So not fair. Like yeah. he's, it's just going to be better just than any it, yeah. anything else at Sundance <laughs> that year. Yeah, I know. I don't want to cheapen what he did with awards because I, I do think he won that that year. But it was it was pretty wonderful. Mm-hmm. Well, you get to start off question number two, which is Ooh. name a film that is underrated. Ooh, underrated. Um, underrated. Should oh. we? Should you you can pass if you want oh, and, and do it later. Okay. There's a, another family favorite of ours in the Shea household <laughs> that I don't think a lot of people have seen, and I think it is one of the greatest pieces of action and also acting around. And it's called The River Wild, oh. with Kevin Bacon and Meryl Streep and John C. Riley and David Strathairn. It's an amazing mm-hmm. film. That not a lot of people have seen. Was this underrated or not off scene? Whatever it was, either one. <laughs> it's underrated. <laughs> underrated. It is uh, an underrated film. It is a great film. It is Meryl Streep just doing what she does best and battling with Kevin Bacon on screen. It's a very good film. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that one. I think it might be insane for me to say this, but I think it's fair to say that Kevin Bacon is underrated mm-hmm. in his own way because people see him as like a cute guy or the guy who right. dancing footloose, right. but he can go toe to toe with Meryl Streep. Absolutely, there is no backing down, and he plays the villain, and he plays it so well in that. Um, it's really, really subtle and understated, and eventually you realize what the two are up to, and. And they have to basically, Meryl Streep is sort of the matriarch of this family, and she has to get them down the river. They're trying to escape from, mm. uh, I don't want to give too much away, but they're escaping from a... Um, a Godzilla, robber. right? It's Godzilla. It's Godzilla, <laughs> right? Down the river. It's River Godzilla. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, underrated, I would go with a movie. It's called The Alamo with Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, it came out in the mid-2000s. Uh, it was supposed to be a big sort of popcorn flick uh kind of bombed at the box office but i love it my dad loves it there's a monologue in it that billy bob thornton who plays davy crockett gives that i think is incredible i think he's just incredible in the movie um uh yeah i would definitely say that i that's one that i always enjoy watching and i I think is underrated who else was in it was it kurt russell in that or no No. i I think i remember seeing it um i don't remember everybody oh uh, dennis quaid was in it um yeah 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 it was uh like I said, it sort of didn't do too well at the box office, um, and I don't feel like it had maybe that much of a life in afterwards. But um, the mo- there's a mono all throughout the movie. Billy Bob is great. There's a bunch of great things that he does as Davy Crockett, uh, but there's a monologue he gives that I just love, and uh, and then the, the rest of the movie. I just think it's a, it's a 
it's a, you know it's of course the movie about the Alamo, so it's a war movie, but it's a very heartfelt movie, um, in my opinion, and the and uh, it's something something about it just touches me every time I see it, so I, I like it. I think we should also note right now that during this conversation, Bailey's taking notes, which is, <laughs> which is exactly why we chose her as our director. Real. For real. Well, she wants to do her own. She's going to watch these films. Uh, well, a part of me is also like, these people that I love are like telling me the films that they love. And I'm like, I believe like the things that you consume, like make you up. You know what I mean? Like that's part of you. And I'm like, why wouldn't I like want to know? what inspires my best friends, you know, so I'm writing all that down. So I'm like, I got to go watch all this <laughs> stuff and like know them better. You know, Aww. it's like knowing someone's like favorite color and like best favorite song. And you're just like, yeah, I know, I know your favorite food. And yeah. So that's why I'm like, writing it really down. <laughs> yeah. I'll send a, li- I'll send an email after. So everyone. Well, thank you. Thank you, director. <laughs> thank you, director. Castle. Um, uh, Film that's underrated. So um, I hate Christmas. I hate the holidays. Are we like best friends? Oh my god. I could not hate Christmas more. I, me too. Oh my god, me too. It needs to burn in hell and die. Oh. Yes. Hot take. As my husband is like a big old Christmas softie. I, I love Christmas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love. This is, Christmas. this is where we deviate in life. Um, so I fucking hate Christmas, and I. It's um, a good title for a movie. <laughs> Is someone taking notes? Can we, Bailey? Oh yeah, I, I wrote it down. Yeah. Okay, so I fucking hate Christmas. Um, and I just think that this movie is comedic genius in every way, and it's Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and it steals my heart every time because I am the Grinch, basically. One, two. I just I think the lines are fucking brilliant. I think his physicality in his face. And in his movements are just incredible to watch. And I, even just from a set construction standpoint, I love the way that Whoville was designed. All the little big and mini details, the costumes, the hair. Like, it was just so beautifully done. And I, I run into many people who are like, oh, I hate that movie. Oh, Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey. No, fuck you. That's the best movie <laughs> out there. Okay, the end. <laughs> but it'd be better if it ended earlier when no one's gotten Christmas back. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, the Grinch is a wonderful... He is the the hero until he turns around and gives that stupid town back Christmas. He just saved them from the worst holiday. I agree with you, but, like, here's the thing. Then we wouldn't have so many of Jim Carrey... Because I I literally can recite that movie. Okay. So, like, even after that whole thing happens, like, you wouldn't then see Jim Carrey, you know, standing around the Christmas tree holding these two randos hands being like... Yeah, that's a really funny part. He's literally making fun of their song, and then his fiance's like, "Nah, bitch, like get get into (laughs) new things, like be be part of this whole thing." And he's like, "Welcome Christmas, right?" Like he's not completely in it yet. You know what I mean? Like there's still some moments where you're kind of like, "Ah, there he is, there he is." So I I never let go of the chance to throw a throw a knife. <laughs> let's go let's go let's go okay. <laughs> I'm like I don't know if these films are underrated um, one that comes to mind is um, Carlos Suarez Deprisa Deprisa which means faster faster in Spanish and it's um, it, it feels like found footage almost but it's not but it's about these teens in Madrid I think and now I'm totally remembering it wrong but they're basically like bonnie and clyde trying to steal money from banks for their like heroin addiction (laughs) and i love that i mean it's just and they they, it's like found actors like people are like actual real people they're not actors the whole time um but he uses this song through like one song throughout the entire film which i love like budget wise it's like you didn't have any money for another song, but it, there's like a theme that's happening there. And then another one that I thought of was the Fisher King, but I don't know if that's underrated. It's like so Terry Gilliam's the Fisher King, <laughs> which is a glorious movie of Jeff Bridges and um, Robin Williams and Amanda Plummer. And I have it on DVD if you guys want to watch it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. See, I haven't heard of like most of these movies, which is which which for me is like yay movie night. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of don't know what underrated maybe necessary. It's like, I guess like people sleep on it, but I don't know. No, you nailed yeah. it because yeah. <laughs> let's face it. I think if someone, you, you nailed it because if someone were to talk about Terry Gilliam's best films, 
I bet they're going to name Brazil, which is mm-hmm. on my list, but, or they're going to name like Fear and Loathing, or they're going to uh-huh. name uh, Time Bandits, stuff like that. Yeah. The Fisher they're King not going to name it. Fisher King anymore. Fisher King doesn't get the love it deserves, for yeah. sure. I love you, Fisher King. <laughs> it's a great film. Yeah. All right, you get to start off overrated. Okay, so we were talking about this in the car, and mm-hmm. I don't know. I kind of feel ethically not right talking about a film that I think is overrated because it's so fucking hard to make films. And so I'm like, fuck, like who the fuck am I to be like, your film's fucking overrated. And cause someone's like, your film's overrated. I'd be like, no, that hurts. Um, but I think what I'm, I talk about things that I think are overrated in film that I'm just exhausted by. And one of that is like, the like massive party scene where everything's like blue and red and like Mm -hmm. a 19, every 19 year old's like snorting Coke. I'm like, what? (laughs) Like, and then we never see like how the drugs interfere with the night ever again. I'm like, I'm so exhausted by that. It just feels very, um, cotton candy and like shock value for, for no payoff that, that I'm, I'm just exhausted by seeing that stuff. Um, but yeah, maybe we can talk offline about the th- the movies that are swarming in my head that I'm like, this is overrated. But um. I have a prepared speech, which is you're not saying it's a bad film. Yeah, you're saying it's overrated. Like for me. Yeah. By the way, you've given your answer, yeah. which is no. And Good. people can. I've had lots yeah. of people say all film is valid. Nothing's overrated. Fine yeah. with me. You can yeah. pass too. Yeah. But like mine is, I'm a huge Coen Brothers fan. Sure. But Fargo's not in my top five for Coen Brothers sure. films. And they got Best Picture for it. And they didn't get Best Picture for Miller's Crossing. So for mm. me, it's like Fargo's overrated because you should, there's a, these yeah. other Coen Brothers films that you should have in higher esteem. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. And I'm not saying Fargo's bad. No, I get Fargo's that. Fargo's fucking no, great. No, I get that. But that's why I call it overrated because no, it got that. a fucking Best Picture Oscar, right? So, so anyway, <laughs> that's, that's my argument that. that you're not insulting it. But no, I hear you. Mm-hmm. But you, Thank you you're for too, that. But you're too nice a person to say something's overrated. So it's Jules' not turn. On, uh, not on a hot mic. How about that? <laughs> okay. You can go when we're done. So I'll be the asshole on a hot no, mic. No, you guys. Everyone's oh, yeah. nice and nope, lovely. Nope, nope, nope. And Jeff, in case you haven't discovered by now, I will freely be that asshole. It's fine. Um, Barbie. Barbie was overrated for me. Um, and I'm sure there'll be many people being like, how could you say that? I'm going to say it. Um, I like, on the one hand, what they were trying to do. I respect what they were trying to do, which was create a, 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 a woman empowering female fronted female cast. Like let's talk about the patriarchy and what it would be like. This look upside, upside down, love the concept. I think it was very poorly executed. I think there were a lot of political tropes that were exaggerated. I think that there were, um, just poor choices in writing. I think that the, um, the monologue that America Ferrera gives, which is supposed to tie the whole film together and make it one big happy thing of like, oh, this is why we don't like the patriarchy. Um, It was a lot of things that had already been said many, many, many times in many different ways by many different politicians, celebrities, moms, aunts, whatever, like you name it, we've already heard it. And I thought it was very anticlimactic. I thought that America Ferrera and I, and I like America Ferrera, but I thought that her delivery was not at all worth an Oscar. Um, I just think that the film, and it has so much hype. And I think that's the other thing too. Now, when you have a film that has so much fucking hype, obviously it kind of does the film a disservice because when you're someone like me who does not go to the movie theaters as much anymore because how fucking expensive it is and I'm lazy and I like to be on Netflix. So I wait till it comes out on my sofa. So therefore, of course, I've heard of all the hype and I've heard of a lot of my friends being like, oh my God, it's so great and it's so empowering. I love it. And I, and I really want to like give it that fair shot. And even though I really tried to go in and watch this film as unbiasedly as I possibly could, I was extremely underwhelmed and I was like, this is like the female film of of pop culture right now. Like this, this is it. This was nominated for all the Oscars. It just, it felt to me like that was the film that we all just wanted to get behind so that we could feel good about ourselves for the female movement. I agree with you in every way. I have other criticisms, but I don't need to pile on. I thought it was just, it's just a, I, I too, was, I had the same reaction. I'm glad they made it. I'm glad, I can't, I, Greta deserves an award for getting a studio to make that film and mm-hmm. getting Mattel mm-hmm. to agree to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as a film, 
super flawed. Okay, fine. Now I'll share my complaint, which is like, <laughs> that I, 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 you can set up any universe for me and I'll go with you. Mm-hmm. But right. once yes. you set up your cinematic universe, mm-hmm. you have to be loyal to it. Yes. And they yes. said, okay, magical Barbie world, realistic real world. Right. And then all of a sudden the real world starts getting magic too. Right. For no reason. Besides the fact that they were lazy, they just wanted the ghost of the woman who created Barbie right, there. Right. Like, fucking don't insult me. You, you, you set up a cool thing. Now, and, now, and now the boardroom is Will Ferrell joke? Right, right, yeah. right. It was just lazy. It just got to win. Like, like, again, like, I thought the idea was awesome. Like, if you were like, hey, actually, Barbie could be this feminist character. Really cool concept. I think that Greta had a great idea in her head, and I, and also let's just talk about visually the construction of that set. Holy fucking shit! Like that literally was my Barbie dream house. Okay, that was my Barbie convertible. Like one thousand percent. They had all the personas down. Barbie president. Like I loved the idea of like, it's Barbie. You can be whatever kind of woman you want. You can be all these different jobs you want. Like that's beautiful. Yes, we love that. Everything else completely fell apart for me in that movie. I thought it was trash. It, I, it wasn't trash. I shouldn't say I thought it was trash. It was not trash, but I think for what it what what it could have been, the potential that it could have had, um, I thought it really missed the mark. And my only defense of Barbie is, I'm so glad that, uh, and I'm I'm being gender biased, but I'm so glad that a female director sure, got to totally. make got to make a mediocre film and have it sell a billion dollars worth of tickets, just like all these guys have made a billion dollars off a mediocre film. Thank you for saying that. Like Hollywood is generally mediocre. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad a woman got to make a mediocre film that made a billion. And and make an impact, right? Like, and make an impact with young girls and girls my age, like kudos. Good for you. Glad it got the spotlight. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> Dave, your turn. <laughs> well, that, was, that, was, that was a hard shift. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I, I actually agree with Jules. That was our that was our movie. Uh, I can't say much. So even you said you, you said there's not much. This for was me the to one add. in the car that we were like, should we talk about? And I was like, I'll do it. There's there's really not much for me to add, especially you know as a guy. But uh, I, I I would say that like the the obviously to your point like a, an uh, overrated film doesn't mean it didn't have any impact it doesn't mean it didn't have any mm-hmm. merit mm-hmm. Um, you know and certainly Barbie did and obviously it it, it, it did have an impact mm-hmm. um, I just you know I, I do think to, to your point Jules there, there is something that maybe is I don't know if unfair is the right word because movies invite it but when a movie has a lot of hype it's hard to live up to the hype so I think that's also another thing that played against it but Barbie is your overrated film. Yeah, Barbie's my overrated film. Yeah. Fair enough. I, I just, I just, honestly, I don't have much to add. Uh, <laughs> no, and, and because yeah. you have a penis in your pants, you probably shouldn't say I any more should. about it. I shouldn't have said anything either. I, Jeremy's up. <laughs> I hate that we, but I hate that that's the case too. I know, right? but it is right. But that's, but, but <clears throat> that's one of the things that I think. Sorry, Tara, to cut you off. I, I just, I just think that's kind of one of the things that this movie also touched on. Just like, oh. You're a man, so you can't have any opinion about this film. And I and I hate that too. I don't think it should be either extreme. So I anyway, go ahead, Sheriff. Sorry. Well, I think it kind of misses the mark too of the point of the film. If there was a point, I think it's more that she was going for like, it's equal. You need both. Right? You need both, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't say anything. <laughs> I didn't say anything about Barbie. No, I did. <laughs> Just it's fine. Uh overrated Baron, right? Um Jeff, I'm a big fan of animated films. Yes. I really like a good animated film. I love a good Pixar. I love a good Disney. <laughs> Me too. And there was this one film out there that I've been holding off on seeing. I don't know why. I just never had an urge to see it. People have been asking me. Oh, my gosh. Nieces have been asking me to see nervous. this. And finally, I caved. And? And I just thought Frozen was... <laughs> you know, I've never seen that. A little bit overrated. <laughs> That's and I get... Maybe that it's might be more life. controversial than Barbie, <laughs> to be honest. I think that is. I think that is. <laughs> maybe it wasn't for my age range, but I thought it was a little bit rushed. I thought it was a little <laughs> bit predictable. I saw exactly what it was going from, like, the first so act, funny. essentially. And um, I thought it was maybe kind of made for commercial purposes to sell dolls. Mm. They just... Like approved three and four, three yeah. and four. Have they even made two? Yeah, they yeah, they've two. made two. But they've... that's nothing uh, to say against the uh, voice actors. Um, Idina Menzel rocks my world every time. Every time. Oh my god, mm-hmm. right in the feels. Um, same with Kristen Bell; she's amazing. But yeah, mm-hmm. I thought that film was a little bit disjointed. I feel that. I mean, I, I, 
it was one of my favorites when it first came out. I think it has not really aged well, I will say. Um, can we just pause and just talk about the fact that Adina Menzel has literally been a part of some of the most iconic pop culture, like, films mm-hmm. and musicals. Oh, she's amazing. Yeah. Like, she originated the role of Maureen in Rent. She originated the role of Alphaba yeah. in Wicked. She originated the role of Elsa in Frozen. It's like, bitch! Like, Uncut gems! The, thank you! Like, leave some for the rest Uncut of gems. us! Uncut gems. What, what did Josh Bolden call her? Adele Nazim? Adele Dazim. <laughs> Adele Dazim. <laughs> thank you. I know this. <laughs> Maybe just, this is just for Jeremy, I'm gonna say it, but she's also like... The Jewish goddess of all time. <laughs> she is. She is. When uh, the 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 Adam Sandler bat mitzvah movie, her playing his wife, mm-hmm. I was like, he probably made this film just so he could pretend that's his wife <laughs> because she is. She is just. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. I just because because of the talent and the intelligence and the looks. and the but like she's just like she's she's kind of my dream person except for the person yeah. I married. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Obviously. Who's great? Shout out. This is great. By the way, I'm with you on Frozen too because when it, when it first came out, we happen to have like a six year old right. girl, right. and I could love nothing more than that ending that it was the true love's kiss was from the sister, so right. to speak. Right. But it doesn't hold like it was such a great flip of the script. Right. But the novelty of it wore off, especially right. as like the kid made me watch it 17 times. <laughs> oh, that's it. That. Only 17. I'm so. pulling a number out of my ass. It was probably 50. <laughs> I know. I probably stopped watching. I started leaving the room probably. Right. That's fair. That's fair. Although to her credit, she, she wanted to watch um, Shaun the Sheep even more, which if you ever watch, that's from, no. it's from Ardman Studios, the guy who did uh, oh. Wallace and Gromit. Oh, oh I love Yes, that. yes, yes. yes. Oh, it's, oh, my gosh. Too. Chicken Yeah, room? yeah. It's Claymation. Claymation. Such a good Anyway. Movie. I love the uh, Wallace and Roman series. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. So Speaking good. Speaking of Shaun, Shaun of the Dead, add that to the favorites. It's a wonderful comedy. Have you guys ever seen Shaun of the Dead? Of course. Yeah. I love that film. Speak of a medium that I don't think I could ever direct because I'd just be so, like, squash the claymation. <laughs> I'm over this. You know what I mean? Like, could not, patience-wise. I'm really, yeah, I mean, that's just Forget like, it. <laughs> like, oh, it's amazing. God. And then when they do the time-lapse video of oh. them doing physical animation Mm -hmm. we could watch that for years Mm -hmm. I'm forgetting the names of the films but lesser known that people should seek out it's Jeremy's Mm -hmm. turn to go first Um, there's a wonderful foreign film that first got me into foreign films I think it actually might have won some awards when it came out it's called The Lives of Others did you guys ever see The Lives of Others no East German right yes oh that was a hell of a movie it was an incredible film um it's about, well, you guys just watch it. It's about, yeah, it's about like mid 80s behind the wall in wow. Germany. And this guy who works for the government spies on people who are perceived traitors and trying to sneak out secrets. And he spies on this one couple, a writer and an actor. And he starts basically falling for mm. them, like feeling for them as people. And it mm. was just an incredible film. And I think that was one of the earliest ones in my memory that blew my mind about foreign films. What are, what are we missing? There's a there's a whole world of other films out there that we don't see because of subtitles. I think we oh my gosh we need to completely pull that back. Yeah, it was a great film. Sorry, I had to find mine. I wasn't ignoring you. I just, I just had to find mine. What's it was called because I can never remember the name of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say a movie uh, by a friend of ours. Uh, mm. His name is Joe Blank, and the movie is called Roman Candle. Uh, he wrote it. He directed it. It is a true indie film. He shot it for $14,000, I think. Uh, so, like, almost no money at all. He filmed it, I think, over COVID. Um, and it is just, uh, it's a relationship drama. It's about uh, a man and a woman that are going through their relationship. And it's just beautifully shot. It's not out yet. I actually texted him. I was like, is it out for anybody? I was like, we're going on this podcast. I'm going to mention your film. Is it anywhere for people to see it? It's not out yet. Uh, I think it's hopefully coming out later this year. But it's called Roman Candle. It did the festival circuit. Uh, it was in Sherman Oaks Film Festival. Was it? Yeah, I think during COVID when it was virtual only. Oh, or no, God. no. Yeah. Yeah, it's but I've seen it. I've it's, seen it's it. It's incredible. Yeah, it's great. I, it, it blew me it's away. Great. I, I saw it at um, NoHo Cinefest. And uh, I, I mean, I went up to Joe afterwards. And I was like, this is incredible. This is one of the best films I've, I've seen. This is amazing. I mean, I just thought the acting was great. I couldn't believe they shot it for... 
for almost no money and it looked incredible. I thought the writing was great. I, I love the movie. And um, uh, like I said, I introduced myself to him. He's a great guy. He's a really, really nice guy. Mm-hmm. Very talented. He continues to make films. And, uh, and I just thought that was great. And I, I, I definitely think that's when people should go seek out when, it, when it's out. I don't remember. Like I said, I think he said later this year it's coming out. It's not out currently. But I, I loved it. I thought it was great. All right. I have to tell you something about Joe, Ben. Um, I think my memory is correct. Roman Candle was in our festival and it was slated for a theatrical screening. And he, through some work thing, was not able to support the screening. And a documentary with like a really great purpose about the Armenian genocide was desperate to get in the theater. And I sent him an email and said, you can't come to your screening. Do you have local support? Like, would you give up your spot for this documentary mm-hmm. about the genocide in Artsakh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he said yes. And I've never had someone give up a theatrical spot before. He's I'm not such surprised. Wow, I'm not he surprised. Really is. He is a good guy. He, he he really is a good guy. I mean, he's uh, like I said, he, I, I consider him a friend, um, mm-hmm. and he's. I'm not surprised at all. I mean, that's and he's so talented. I mean, uh, it was just one of those films that like. Y- y- when you watch it for me again, it was just like, I have to go talk to you because this is just great. So, um, I think you're just kind of like, am I in the same category as this? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, um, I'm gonna cheat and I have two because I have one that's indie and one that's not. Um, uh, uh, indie wise, uh, another one of our really good friends, uh, her name is Marissa Hood. She is also a, uh, an actor and a writer and a producer in LA. Uh, she's very ridiculously talented. Um, and, she normally does comedy, but she did a really riveting short called Shalane. And um, it explores uh, kind of two, two, the same concept from two different angles. One is about a woman who uh, has a miscarriage. And then at the same time, it's a, there's another woman who uh, was, I think she was drugged, was drugged and raped. And mm-hmm. so it's sort of combating like, okay, these two sexual traumas um, from these two different lenses. And I just really couldn't believe what was done with the acting and with what, because it was a short, with what limited time they had with the story arcs. Um, the, the, the girl, I know the, the, I think she was like a teenager. She was, I think that's like one of her first films and she was wonderful. Uh, Marissa who played, uh, the lead, she was fantastic. I was very moved by her performance. Um, I have no idea if it's out yet. I think, that, I think it's, I think it finished the short circuit. Um, I'll ask her. Um, and then this is a film that I don't really know has, if, if people have heard of it or not, but it actually made a really big, big impact on my Nana. And so I watched it. Um, it's called the imitation of life. It's from like the 1960s and it's about, um, a, the, a woman who is black, but she's white passing and she has a clearly black mother. And I, I don't remember the full plot, but basically, you know, I, I think the daughter, they make like the daughter, is um like wealthier and that the mother is her servant to kind of like Mm. essentially elevate her in the world but then it becomes a very very strange relationship and it you know it explores race it explores a mother-daughter relationship and this is Mm. like a movie from the 1960s so i'm just kind of like what are we looking at here and i just found that to be a very fascinating thing to explore that during that time period but and then the fact that it's still relevant but also just like kind of i just i just think it's a film that hasn't been seen and really should be so, imitation of life. Mm-hmm. Sounds amazing. Yeah, it's cool. All right, Bailey, you're, you're wrapping it up. I'm wrapping it up. So I'm going to shoot it over to Chicago, and my um, not well-known film is called Ghost Light. It came out this year. It's making its rounds. I think it was at Sundance this year. Um, it's the second feature from directing duo Alex Sullivan, uh, Alex Thompson, excuse me, and Kelly O'Sullivan. And they're Chicago native. They still live there. It is, Ghost Light is this um, basically like love letter to Chicago theater. And it's about um, a man who's this, this construction worker who's grappling, this family's like grappling with a tragedy in their life. And he um, gets sucked into a community theater production of Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> and um, chaos ensues, right? <laughs> but um, what I love the most about it is that this family that it centers around is an actual family in the Chicago theater world. He is a prominent Chicago actor, Steppenwolf. I don't know if he's a company member, but 
is around the town, and then the wife is the, um, I believe she's the artistic director of Rivendell Theater, and then their daughter. And so I saw it at a film independent screening maybe like a month ago, and I was just blown away. And there was a Q&A with them afterwards, so I just want to shout them out. Ghostlight. Did you promote it on social media? I, I've heard of it. I, 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 might, mean, like, I took a fact, picture of it. I was like, goes light. <laughs> but, okay, so I, yeah. that's why I've seen it. Yeah. It's because of you. Yeah. You should watch it. I used to love Film Independent. I was like, so good. I was a member. And then yeah. like 40 years ago when it was Independent Feature Project, IFP. <laughs> right. Yeah. I became a member to go to that screening. <laughs> I was like, I have to go see this movie. And I became a member to go do that. Yeah. And it paid off. And it paid off. Excellent. All right. I want to see it. All right. I'm going to wrap it up. We're done. <gasps> We're done. Fantastic. Any We're favorites th- of yours that you want to tell us that quickly? I'm curious about you. You really want to know? I, I, I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you right after we stop recording. And the only reason I'm being cagey is not to be cagey. This is going to be episode 430-something. It went from episode 99 to 101 because I promised someone that he could interview me for number 100 and had get oh, my list. Nice, yeah. nice, 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 nice. And that was six years ago. Okay. Gotta keep that but promise. I'm still being loyal to him. Good that's, for you. That's cool, man. That's cool. But uh, the graduate's on it. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm supposed to wrap it up, right? All yeah. right. So these four lovely people answer the questions. There will be... Uh, clickable links in the show notes for everything they do and everything they want you to be able to reach. Mm. So just look at the show notes if you want to find them on social media or websites, whatever. And now I'm going to name the social media and websites I need to do to wrap this up. So thank you for listening to the Discover Indie Film Podcast. If you want to learn more about the podcast or the TV series on Amazon Prime Video that was born out of it, just go to discoverindiefilm.com or at DIF Wins on social media. Their film, Back Home, you should try to see. Hopefully, there'll be a link to it. Uh, Back Home was at Film Invasion Los Angeles in 2023, won some awards. And if you want to learn more about Film Invasion Los Angeles that we hold every June, just go to filminvasionla.com or at filminvasionla on social media. It's Sister Festival, Sherman Oaks Film Festival. It's kind of its big sister at this point because for some reason Sherman Oaks is like outgrowing it. Sherman Oaks is shermanoaksff.com or at shermanoaksff on social media. And lastly, uh, if you like indie film, go to watchtvhigh.com or download the TV High smart TV app on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, Android TV, iPhone, iPad. I sometimes are afraid if I say iOS, people don't know it's iPhone or an iPad because <laughs> I'm like a big nerd, so like <laughs> iOS means something to me. Uh, and uh, and Android Mobile. There we go. That's everything. Thank you all. Thanks so much, Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. It was very fun. And now I'm gonna hit stop. Yeah. Oh wait, like and subscribe to the podcast if you're still listening.